hits the spot. Why have you come, Inspector Gregson? Surely they serve tea at Scotland Yard. Oh, so sorry. I'm here on behalf of Inspector Lestrade. You see, he needs a little help. Lestrade? Asking for our help? He's at his wit's end. He didn't travel far to arrive there. <laughs> Pardon me, sir. I... Never mind. What sort of assistance does he require? He'd like you to solve the Thames murders. No, I've been following that one in the London Times. Four bodies found floating in the river over the last week. A five, Dr. Watson. Roland Jacquard was found under the Charing Cross footbridge early this morning. The stepson of Lord Astley Denham? That's the chap. From my understanding, his was a reputation as a mountebank and a ne'er-do-well. Uh, from what I hear, he spent most of his days at the card tables of the Bagatelle Card Club. He was one of the finest whist players in London. And his nights? Uh, spent in the drawing rooms and often bedrooms of some of the best families in London. You mean he was a womanizer? Well, he wasn't a traveling chambermaid, Watson. What of the other murders, Inspector? Any progress there? Uh, no, but Lestrade is still working on the case. Oh, that fills me with confidence. <laughs> yes, me too, Mr. Holmes. Well, I must be off. Thank you so much for your assistance. Before you go, Gregson, do you have the other victims' names? Oh, thank you for reminding me. Here they are, Mr. Holmes, along with the dates of the murders. I'll slip them right inside your notebook. I would appreciate it, Inspector. No doubt they will prove useful. Always thinking, Mr. Holmes. Always thinking. Nathan Revell and Mr. Jacquard are both members at the club. Nathan and I are partners and frequently played against Jacquard and his partner, Moran. Sebastian Moran? Yes. How well did the two of you meet their challenge? <laughs> it's hard to believe, but at first we won. <laughs> They're two of the best players at the club. But then our luck changed. We couldn't win no matter how good the cards were. Did they cheat? Cheat? Of course not. Club members are gentlemen. Did you have a wager on the game, Mr. Adair? A small one. A pound or two, nothing important. And Ravel? I don't know. When did you last see Ravel? The night before he died. We were playing against Jacquard and Moran till midnight. <laughs> we didn't win a game all night. Nathan seemed upset. He and Moran seemed to have a bit of a disagreement. What about the night Ravel was murdered? I had a drink here with Moran. He said he was waiting for Nathan. When he didn't show, he got upset. He waited till a little before eight and then left. He told me if Nathan stopped by to tell him to meet him at the Tankerville. When was the last time you saw Jacquard? Last night about 8.30. He'd been here since 4.30. He received a postal telegram. After reading it, he jumped from his chair saying he had unexpected business. Have you seen Moran lately? Not for the last few days. I understand he's on the continent. Roland Jacquard was here last night. He picked up Letitia. How serious was the romance between Miss Garcia and Jacquard? Well, not as serious as Jacquard would have liked. <laughs> Letitia is a fun-loving girl. She has lots of admirers and uh, she knows how to take advantage of it. Do you know who else she was taking her fun with, so to speak? Well, there are three who come to mind. Jacquard, but I guess we might say he's no longer in the running. Marco Escobeda, the pugilist, who seems particularly smitten with her. And Celesta Ogilvy, who is rather a strange bird. Do you have any idea who might have wanted to kill Jacquard? No, sir. I've been studying drama all my life, but I only watch it, mate. I don't write it. I'm usually quite fastidious, but I left everything as I found it this morning. Now oh, that poor, poor man. Did you see Mr. Jacquard last night? No, lovey. I went home early after leaving dinner out for him and the guest, as he asked. Interesting. What is it, Holmes? A Mauser T11 and a Lafourchure pistol. Lafourchure has been recently fired. Three shots. And the Mauser? 
Not in the last day or so. Mr. Jackard was quite the gun collector, I can assure you. Well, Watson, here we have letters of credit totaling thousands of pounds. My word. And I have merely found his wallet with 140 pounds and a recent playbill from the Elephant and Castle Theatre. Do you know who Mr. Jacquard was entertaining last night? No, I don't, Ducky. But I did see something strange this morning. The Persian rug is missing from that corner of the room. I don't know why anyone would want to steal a rug. Do you know anyone else who might be able to shed light on this? You might try nosy Mrs. Ivory next door. She's always in everybody's business. This has all been very difficult. You see, I knew three of the victims. Charles, Charles Attard was my solicitor, Roland Jacquard a friend, and Nathan Ravel worked for my late husband's firm, Lindsay and Company. For the life of me, I can't imagine why anyone would want to kill them. Did the victims know one another, Mrs. Lindsay? Roland and Charles were friends. In fact, Roland introduced me to Charles. I suppose Charles must have met Ravel when he went to the firm to handle my business affairs, but he never mentioned it. I don't think Roland knew Ravel at all. I can't imagine how he would.
How did he think about the Thames murders? Well, two of the victims was regulars here. Cyril Maud and Curtis Twiggs. Twiggs? Yeah, Twiggs. The one the police identified as Leo Shepard. Twiggs and Maud were partners, a part of the Moriarty gang. Word had it that they were Moran's strong-arm boys. But Twiggs was the knife man, and Maud was a deadly aim with a pistol. Together, they made quite a mean pair. Any word on why they were murdered? No, nothing. Although, after the murder, word had it that Moran wanted to find Twigs. No reason, but then <laughs> Moran don't have to give one. When did you last see them? The night Maud was murdered. He and Twigs were sitting here, drinking their dinners. Around eight o'clock, Moran comes in, talks to them, and leaves. Maud checks over his pistol, they drained their pints, and dashed off. Do you recall if Roland Jacquard had dinner here on the evening of May 30th? He arrived at 7.30 p.m. and was joined by Mrs. Kathleen Lindsay. He ordered a bottle of Grohl Rose, 76, to accompany their duck. Uh, I'm not interested in what they ate, but I am curious to know when they left. They left at midnight. Did anyone else join them? Colonel Sebastian Moran at 9.10. He had one drink with them and left at 9.45. Was that the last time you saw Jacquard? No, 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 no. The last time I saw Mr. Jacquard was June 1. He spent most of the afternoon in the game room, came into the dining room around 8.30. He had dinner alone and left at 9.30. Thank you. This has been most illuminating. The Queen's Court stands in order. I understand you're ready to unravel the Thames murders. A terribly complicated case indeed. Uh, tell me who murdered Nathan Ravel. Uh, please choose from either your notebook or the directory. Positively correct. Now tell the court why did Maud murder Ravel? So, Maud was merely a henchman. Now who put an end to his unsavory life? Excellent deduction. Now, why did Twiggs kill Maud? That wasn't the motive at all. Leave this courtroom at once and head straight for the start of the game. Brilliant reasoning. Now tell the court who murdered Charles Attard. Twiggs was a busy and brutal man, wasn't he? Tell me, why did he do it? I suppose Attard was no match for Twigs in a gunfight, but clearly someone was. Tell the court who finally murdered Curtis Twigs. Superb deduction. Now, what was Jack Card's motive? Oh, 
what a tangled web we weave. Now please tell the court who murdered Roland Jacquard. Bravo! Now, what was Escobedo's motive? Exemplary work on a most difficult case. The court is recessed. Until next time. An extremely difficult case and your score is absolutely perfect. I'm quite sure we could not have done any better. Well, Holmes, you've done it again. Well, I believe we've done it, Watson. Oh, yes. <laughs> but the twists and turns of this one still puzzle me. W would you mind... Uh... Elaborating? <laughs> Not at all. Nathan Revell was a simple, hard-working fellow whose one passion became his undoing. Whist? Indeed. Once he began to play with the likes of Moran and Jacquard, his fate, I'm afraid, was sealed. Do you suppose he was cheated? Out of his money and his life. You see, by cheating Revell at the card table, Moran was able to force him to participate in his scheme to embezzle from Lindsay and company. And once he had Revell under his thumb, he enlisted Charles Attard, who was Mrs. Lindsay's lawyer. Through him, he was able to gain access to the firm's confidential records, and thus he had all he needed to execute his embezzlement scheme. I suppose Mr. Revell's suicide note would suggest he had a change of heart. Precisely, Watson. And on the evening he was to take the embezzled securities to Moran, Revell wrote that suicide note and left the documents in his room for Patterson to find. So that's how Maud and Twigs fit in. Yes. Moran sent them to kill Revell and retrieve the stolen securities. Maud, the gunman, shot Revell, and he and Twiggs dropped the body into the Thames. But holding six thousand pounds was too much temptation for Twiggs. He killed Maud, took the securities and the Mauser T-11 and went into hiding. So, then a tard went looking for Twiggs. And unfortunately for him, he found him. Twiggs killed him with the gun he'd taken from Maud. What made you first suspect that it was your car that finally put an end to Curtis Twiggs? I knew from the moment we discovered the securities, the Mauser and the Lafo show at Jacquard's home. It all fit together, an all too common tale of dishonesty and betrayal. The only thing that didn't fit was the death of Roland Jacquard. I suppose if he'd been killed for the securities, we wouldn't have found them on his desk, would we? Very observant, Watson. You see, this was a death due not to his criminal intrigues, but to his romantic intrigue with one Letitia Garcia. There was another man who believed she belonged to him. Marco Escobedo? Yes. I've always thought it would be rather risky to become romantically involved with the lady friend of a pugilist. Words to live by, Watson. I shudder to think what happened that night. It is a grisly thought. Because after Jacquard murdered Twiggs and brought Miss Garcia back to his home, and into his bedroom, I might add, they were interrupted by Escobedo. Judging by the clothing strewn about the room, poor Mr. Jacquard must have been in the nude when Escobedo attacked and murdered him. That would explain the skivvies. Or lack thereof. Escobedo must have quickly dressed the body, not showing the same care as the fastidious Jacquard. He then rolled the body up in the bedroom rug and dumped it into the Thames. An ironic resting place, to be sure, since he knew nothing of Jacquard's involvement with the other murders. Positively brilliant, Holmes. Elementary, my dear Watson.